Cobweb Christmas, The Tradition of Tinsel by Shirley Clemo, illustrated by Jane Manning. Cobweb Christmas. Once upon a Christmas time, long ago in Germany, there was a little old woman. She was so little she had to stand on a stool to climb into bed, and so old she couldn't even count all the Christmases she'd seen. The children in the nearby village called her Tante, which means auntie in German. Tante lived at the edge of a pine forest in a tiny cottage, just large enough for her to keep a canary for singing, a cat for purring, and a dog to lie beside the fire. Squeezed up against the cottage was a barn. In it, Tante kept a donkey for riding and a goat for milk and cheese. She had a noisy rooster to wake her in the morning and a speckled hen to lay an egg for her breakfast. With so many animals about, her little cottage wasn't very tidy, but a bit of fur, a few feathers, or a spider web or two didn't bother Tante, except once a year, when the days got short and the nights grew long. The old lady would nod her head and say, Time to clean for Christmas. Then Tante shook the quilt and scared, scored, scoured the kettle until it shone. She scrubbed the floor on her hands and knees and stood tiptoe on her stool and swept the cobwebs from the rafters. Shoo, said Tante. She swished her broom and sent every spider on each wisp of web flying out the door. When she cleaned her home from corner to corner, the little old woman nodded and said, Time to fetch Christmas. Tante took an axe from the barn and hung the harness with bells on the donkey. She scrambled onto his back and they totted, trotted into the forest. They circled round and round until the old lady cried, There! She pointed to a pine tree, no bigger than she was. That one's just right, she told the donkey. Tante chopped down the tree, taking care to leave a bow behind it so it might grow again. Then bells jingling, they went home. Only now the donkey carried the tree upon his back and Tante skipped along beside him. The tree fit perfectly in the tiny cottage. The old woman nodded and said, time to make Christmas. Tante made cookies for the tree. She baked gingerbread girl, boys and girls. She rolled sugar cookies shaped like new moons and cut cinnamon cookie stars. She rubbed apples until they gleamed like glass to hang from the branches too. Next, she put a red ribbon on a bone for the dog and tied a sprig of catnip for the cat. Tante scattered corn from the chickens and seeds for the canary, and she heaped oats in a basket for the donkey and goat. Then the old woman nodded and said, Time to share Christmas. Each year, Tante invited the village children to come and see her tree. Tante, they shouted, it's the most wonderful tree in the world. Tell me if it tastes as good as it looks, she said. After the children nibbled the apples and the cookies and ate every crumb of gingerbread, they hurried home to put their shoes by their doors for Kris Kringle. He was the Christmas visitor who went from house to house tucking gifts into waiting shoes. Then Tante asked the animals to share Christmas. The dog, the cat, the canary, the hen, the rooster, and some small, shy, wild creatures crowded around the tree. The donkey and the goat peered into the doorway. Tante had something for everyone. Everyone except the spider, for they'd all been brushed away. But no one could give the little old lady what she wanted. All her life, Tante had heard tales about marvelous happenings on Christmas Eve. Animals might speak aloud. Bees might hum carols or cocks crow at midnight. Tante wished she could witness a bit of Christmas magic, too. She sighed and sat down in her rocking chair. Time to wait for Christmas, said the old lady, and she nodded and nodded her head. Tante was so tired from cleaning and cooking that she fell fast asleep. She did not know if the rooster crowed when the clock struck twelve, or if the dog whispered secrets to the cat. And she did not hear the squeaky voices calling at her door, Let us in! Someone else heard. Chris Kringle was passing the cottage on his way to take toys to the village children. He stopped to listen and saw hundreds of spiders on Tante's doorstep. 
We have never shared a Christmas, the biggest spider explained. Each year, Tante sweeps us away. Please, Kris Kringle, would you let us see Tante's tree? Kris Kringle looked down at the spiders. There's some harm in that, he said. Before he went on to the village, he opened Tante's door a crack. Huge spiders, tiny spiders, smooth spiders, hairy spiders, spotted spiders, striped spiders, brown and black and yellow spiders, and the palest kind of sea smooth spiders came creeping, crawling, sneaking softly, scurrying, burrowing, quickly, lightly, zigging, zagging, weaving, and wobbling into the old woman's cottage. The curious spider crept closer and closer to Tante's tree. One, two, three skidded up the trunk, and all the other spiders followed. Silently, they ran from branch to branch, back and forth and up and down the tree. Wherever the spiders went, they left a trail behind. Threads looped from limb to limb, and webs were woven everywhere. Now the busy little spiders had shared Christmas. They had seen and felt every twig on the tree, so they scuttled away. When he had put a gift into all the children's shoes, Kris Kringle returned to left Tante's door. He peeked inside and discovered her tree, tangled with sticky, stringy cobwebs. He knew how hard the old lady had worked to make Christmas, and how dismayed she would be when she saw her tree. But he didn't blame the spiders for being curious. Instead, he decided to leave a special gift for Tante, too. Gently, Kris Kringle touched each web. Beneath his finger, the slender strands gleamed like gold, and the dangling threads sparkled silver. Now Tante's Christmas tree was truly the most wonderful in the world. The rooster woke Tante in the morning. The old lady blinked in amazement at her glittering tree. Something magical has happened, she cried, and she climbed on her stool for a better look. At the top of the tree, she saw one small spider finishing its web. Ah, Tante nodded her head. So it is you and your kin I have to thank for this Christmas magic. The little old lady understood that such wonders only happen once. Each Christmas thereafter, she did not clean so carefully, but left a few webs in the rafters so that the spiders might share Christmas too. And every year, after she hung the cookies and the apples on the tree, she would nod and say, Time for Christmas magic. Then Tante would weave tinsel among the branches until her tree sparkled with strings of gold and silver just as it did that magical cobweb Christmas.